database buffer cache. It is for sure a part of the system globally. We already have discussed that before. Okay, so what exactly does the database buffer cache hold? Actually, the database buffer cache holds copies of data blocks that are read from data files. That means that if we would like to fetch some data like the details of the employees compared with some other pieces of information like the departments, the locations, and so all this stuff from our data files. Fetching these data is not going to be like, you know, a straightforward process to fetch the data from the data file and it is going to be previewed for the client connection or whatever. It has to be fetched first in like, you know, a stage a stage place, usually it is the, in the system, global area, it is the database buffer cache. Any changes you would like or you are planning to do, any data manipulation language statements that you would like to execute against, these data you have just fetched or you have just selected are gonna be done in this memory allocation, the database buffer cache. So, it is shared by all concurrent users, but doesn't that doesn't mean actually that it is available for the public, okay? There is still all kind of authentications that have to be run against these pieces of data. So, if you, let us assume that you don't have uh, access for the employees table in the HR scheme, and it happens to be you try to do such a thing, and it is available in the, more, in the, in the memory. Does that mean that you will be able to access these plugs actually you are not going to be able to do such a thing because you have to run through the authentication steps which validates your access to such pieces of information so actually you will run through all the authentication levels which we have discussed before and in case you have passed them you will be able to utilize the existence of these chunks of information or these data blocks in the memory without fetching them again from the database files and you will not need any kind of disk input and output operations further anymore for these data blocks. Okay, so what is read load buffer and what is the difference between the database buffer cache and the read load buffer cache? Actually, you can say that the read load buffer cache is like a circular buffer in the system global area. Again, it is a part of the system global area and we are agreed about that. But what exactly the contents or the nature of the contents that the read look buffer cache has inside it? It holds the information about the changes that made to the database. Okay, so let us assume that you have done like hundreds of transactions again to your database. All these transactions are gonna be held as a change vectors. So that means only the statements who did what against which tables or which objects exactly. That is the responsibility of the read loop buffer, buffer cache to keep track of all the change vectors that happened against your database object during the sessions of your database. <clears throat> so, it contains the entries that have the information to read with changes made by operations such as DML and DDL, data manipulation languages and the data definition languages. All this stuff are going to be held in the read loop buffer cache. So why exactly we need such information to be kept the track of during the database operation? Let us assume that you are working during the day and you know all the modifications happened against your database in the database buffer cache. But you didn't get that suitable time to you know flush all these changes again to the database data files. Okay, so this disk IO actually usually in the middle of the day makes a lot of disk contention so the priority here actually always are being gave to the database buffer cache not the database buffer cache the read load buffer cache is the database the read load buffer has to flush all its contents before the database does that this happens according to a protocol called right ahead protocol actually this protocol guarantees that you will not be able to write any modified blocks to the disk before the change vectors related to these changes have been successfully flushed and propagated successfully to 
the redo data files and we are going to discuss the redo data files in so much details in further lessons inshallah